Hi folks and welcome to the postscript of this week's podcast episode. Hope you enjoyed my conversation with Justin Urquhart Stewart. Always a legend, always good value. In sort of thinking about what value to add in the postscript here, I thought I'd just try and give you some context for the recent market wobbles and just talk a little bit about how different assets behave and how by blending them, i.e. spreading your money around, you can uh, mitigate the impact of the volatility. Remember, volatility is always an opportunity. It's a good thing. It's normal in markets, so it's not something to be afraid of. But you can mitigate it to a certain extent. So I'm going to nip very quickly to a screen flow, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, here's just some figures and some charts to put the recent market volatility in context. What you're looking at here is the MSCI World Index. So it's an index of world share markets. Okay, and you can see that dip from there to there is the recent correction, is what we call it. You certainly can't call it a crash. It's it's a dip, really, or a correction. And that's an 8.9, we'll call it a 9% dip in the value of the markets between about the 11th, 10th of January and the 7th or 8th of February. Okay, so that's a three month timeline you're looking at there. If I, excuse me, a <laughs> little bit of windy pops, I think I covered it well. Uh, if you um, increase the, the time span to five years, that little dip there at the end is the recent market volatility. Okay, that kind of puts it in context, doesn't it? Certainly in the, uh, uh, the scheme of that line of five years worth returns, the most recent volatility, which the newspapers made such a big thing about, really is just a blip along the way. This is 15 years worth of returns from that same index, and you can see the recent blip there right at the end. And in that context, this definitely is just a blip. For reference, that period there is the worst financial crisis in living memory, certainly since the um, Great Depression of the late 20s, early 30s. So, you know, that's a 33% uh, decline in world stock markets combined, a third of your money gone if you're invested in this index. That's pretty serious by any measure. But even that, in the context of this 15-year window, just goes to show that if you can hold your nerve long enough um, and maybe see that even as a buying opportunity, markets generally rise over time. Let's just have a look at some different kinds of assets. This is the MSCI World Share Index again, this time over five years. If I add to that, that's UK stock markets. That's the FTSE All Share. So you can see that it's not performed as well, but it follows a very similar pattern. The lines are similar shaped, if you like. Add in emerging markets. That's places like Brazil, Russia, India, China. And you can see how different parts of the world behave. You've got the overall line in blue, um, UK in red, and emerging markets in green. You can see that there is clear merit in spreading your money around, which is essentially what the blue line is. It's all equities, all shares, but all around the world. Um, just added another couple of lines there, only meant to do one. Let me just have to take one away. There we go. The teal line there is uh, gilt. So that's UK gilt, loans to the UK government, very different from equities. And that's evidenced by the fact that the line looks very different. It's much smoother, much less spiky. And yes, it's returned uh, a worse return over the period than each of the other lines. But that's just a snapshot. You see there was a point there in the middle of the graph where the teal line was higher than the green line and you would have made more money in very safe and steady UK gilts than you would in pretty volatile and risky emerging market investments. Just adding another couple more. The pink line is what you would have got if you'd have left your money in the bank at 2.5% interest. Pretty ambitious to get that these days, but still. And then red is inflation. So each of the other asset classes beats inflation over the last five years. That's the whole point of investing in real assets. But really the idea is that by blending them, you should get the best of all worlds. Let me just show you that very briefly. Here we've got the MSCI world again in blue and the gilts index in the greeny teal color. And you can see how different they are. Shares and gilts as a proxy for bonds. Okay, uh, Shares in, in blue, gilts in uh, the green color in B. So they behave very differently. The pink line is a blended portfolio. It's about half shares spread all around the world, about 40% in bonds, and about 10% in alternatives, the stuff that Justin was talking about. 
And you can see here, what you've got is kind of the best of both worlds. It's not a perfect outcome because it's still a little bit more volatile than we would have liked. This is a 10 year uh, window, by the way. So you can see that the pink line, it looks a little bit like the blue line. It's similar shape but it's less spiky. It doesn't go down so far. It doesn't go up so far either. So it's kind of a less volatile version. And yes, it performs worse, but that's the point. You know, if you spread your money around, you get lower volatility. You also get lower uh, returns as a rule, but that's the price of the lower risk. But by striking in the middle of there, you're it's sort of proving the point. You spread your money around, that will um, ease the volatility, mitigate it to a point, um, all uh, in pursuit of um, perhaps a bit more uh, restful sleep as you invest. So the message from all of this is um, different kinds of assets behave differently. Different geographical regions behave differently. By holding them all in different weights, you can get the best of all, wor all worlds by blending a portfolio together. Okay, hope that made sense and just gave you a bit of context. Let me know what you think in the comments uh, here underneath the video. And thank you for watching. Just uh, don't forget, the I'm going to give it two more days from the release uh, of this podcast episode. So I'm going to give it till Friday the 9th of March 2018 um, for you to get your responses in to the Chris Ducker Rise of the Upreneur competition. That's from two weeks ago. So go to meaningfulmoney.tv slash BQ6. Watch the video and find out how you can enter. All right. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week.